A one and a two and a chick a boom a chick. All right, welcome everyone to another episode of Remodelers on the Rise. And today I have Spencer Powell with me with uh, Builder Funnel. Spencer, say hello. Hello, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I don't, I'm not too big into like bios of like Spencer started his, but I'm, I'm not too much into that. Frankly, I kind of, sometimes it kind of, I, I equate it to when you like have a reference sheet or you get a letter of recommendation. It's like, well, of course you're going to say good things about him. Same thing when somebody provides a bio. So what I like to do is just share, you know, why am, am I as somebody that I work very hard to um, you know, build a reputation, build a lot of know, like, and trust. So when I invite somebody on, um, it's somebody that, that I trust. And flat out, that's maybe all you need to know, but I'll share some more where Spencer and I have just known each other, I don't know, five or, five or six years maybe. Yeah, I was going to guess somewhere between, you know, yeah. four and six. So. <laughs> both, we're, both, we're both getting older. We're both losing our hair. We're both having kids, right? All that stuff. It's crazy. Um, but we've just, we've just gotten to know each other over the years. And I've, I've always been impressed with um, Spencer's just willingness to share. You know, when you, when you interact with other business owners, sometimes it's like, man, it's, it's obvious this is kind of one-sided. With Spencer, he has just always been a resource, somebody that – has been open to answer questions within his expertise, which is website, SEO, digital marketing side of things. And I've just always appreciated that. We've done a few projects together here and there over the years, and he's just somebody that I, I really respect. So as I was thinking of bringing on some more guests, um, I thought, you know, Spencer has been kind to have me on the Builder Funnel Radio. I'm going to return the favor. And what we're going to kind of dive into today is... I'm a remodeler, let's say, this is hypothetical. I'm a remodeler. I have a website. I maybe have a Facebook business page. Um, I've got my Google listing, my Google business page. And I also just am running a business. There's a lot of hats that we wear as remodelers that you wear, who you remodelers who are listening to this, wear as a business owner. So what uh, I'm kind of just setting the foundation of and the conversation that Spencer and I are going to have today is just focused on Given those circumstances, given that situation, what are some things that you, Spencer, would recommend to remodelers when it comes to their website, their digital marketing? And we'll, uh, we'll kind of have you start. I'll play off it a little bit and we'll get some good ideas on the table. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. And yeah, thank you for the, uh, the non-bio introduction. Uh, that, I think that turned out way better than anything I would have written. Perhaps. So. Perhaps. I, I, <laughs> I, I, felt it was a, I felt it was a little clunky, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So yeah, I think a lot of things come to mind, but we can just kind of dive in. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is in just thinking about the website and the content on the website. And I go to a lot of remodelers websites and they, they're missing a whole services section. So mm -hmm. they might have a portfolio, which you think, oh, it's obvious what I do. I have a kitchen portfolio, a bathroom portfolio, et cetera but you don't realize that you don't actually have, you know, just services. What do I, what do I do? And I think online, you know, people are moving fast and they're looking for something that obvious. And it also helps you from an SEO perspective, which we can talk about, but I see either people missing that services page, or if they do have it, they just have one page and it just kind of lists, you know, a few bullet points of, you know, kitchens, baths, additions, sunrooms, and so, so they're not broken at yeah, talk about maybe it gets into a little SEO, but the thought of breaking that out. I do kitchen remodeling, bathroom remodeling, additions, basements. Why should I go through the effort of creating separate pages for each of those? Yeah, it's a really good question, and it, it's a way you can... Well, well thank, thank you, Spencer. Fantastic question. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think, you know, from an SEO perspective, it does a lot for you, which is if somebody is looking for somebody to help them with kitchen remodeling or a basement remodel, they're going to type in that specific service mm. and they're most likely in a location. So if somebody was doing a search for kitchen remodeling Dallas or basement remodeling Seattle, then if you've got a page specific to that, then you can target in on that keyword. And that's kind of where that SEO piece starts to come in content and keywords are kind of, I mean, they work together today in terms of when sure. you think of SEO, because you need 
content in order to optimize it or put in those uh, keywords and locations. So an example of that basement remodeling page, the, the page title on that would be you know, basement remodeling services in Seattle. And so you're able to target that and then you can actually deliver on that promise. If somebody does a Google search and they find your page, you can talk about basement remodeling in Seattle. And so um, what you're trying to do is really just give the people what they want in terms of information and mm. kind of match those things up. Very good. So it's, it's interesting that you started with, you know, just, and, and that's kind of what, I, this is the thing I wanted to do, which is just real foundational stuff. It, it might seem, you know, sometimes the basic things get overlooked. Sometimes the basic things may have been looked at three years for, ago and you haven't looked at it since. So um, one, one thing just to make sure everybody's on the same page, SEO, search engine optimization, just even the, the basic of that, of understanding what that acronym is. But one thing that um, comes to mind as you talk about the content of your website, and I, I like how you um, picked on the services tab, because that's a, that's a very tangible takeaway that, that you guys can have as you're listening to this. But the other thing I would add to that is just pulling up your website, getting a cup of coffee, having a notepad or a notebook open, and just going through there and giving it a good, fresh look from your eyes. Like imagine you're a prospect coming to this website. Chances are for the majority of you listening, it's been a long time since you've just taken 30 minutes to go page by page through your website. And I guarantee there's going to be several things you might want to delete. There's going to be some things that you want to add. And it's a very good um, exercise to go through. And, and Spencer, you're the expert at this, but I think Google likes to see updates to the pages. Even if we just update some text, if we add one more photo, um, maybe share a thought about that and then maybe get into a, a next thing that, that they should be watching out for. Yeah. Yeah. And just to kind of build on your idea, you know, maybe have a neighbor, a friend go through the site and, you mm -hmm. know, say, Hey, if you were looking to hire a remodeling company and you were on this website, what would you do? What information would you be looking for? And kind of have them talk out loud as they're going through it. Um, I think that can help uncover some things. It can also lead to some rabbit holes where you may be like, they just say all these things and some of those may not be relevant, but I think you'll be able to pick out some trends if you did that with two or three people and they said, man, I couldn't find X. Well, sure. you might want to think about adding that to the site. Um, back to your question on, I guess, freshness of content. So liking the website to be updated. Uh, yes, Google loves updated content. And that actually is something that we've been talking about a lot internally and with a lot of remodeling companies is actually in the context of blog posts, but it would certainly apply to just your core website pages, like your service pages and portfolio. Um, but say you wrote a blog post back in 2013 or 2015, it was, you know, kitchen design trends for 2015, not super relevant anymore, but that post has been indexed in Google for a long time. So it's built up some authority. And so if you actually go back to that post, update it, make sure the content is relevant for this year, the current year, current trends, and then republish it as new. That post actually is a stronger post. It can jump up in the rankings better than say a new post. If you just said, Hey, I'm going to write about 2019 trends. Hmm. I'm going to write a new post. You'll actually benefit more from going. So you would, and updating. Let's, let's say, let's say you're on WordPress. I go into that old post. Correct. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't delete that post. I would no. just edit that existing one. You got it. Yep. Edit okay. the existing post. Make sure you change the publish date to the day that you're going to hit publish on it. And you can even put in the, um, in the bottom of the post, you know, originally posted, you know, at this time updated this date. So people kind of know um, in case there are some trends that are the same. Uh, but yeah, Google really likes fresh content and, but they also like robust and good information. So that's a way to kind of tackle both, which is okay. I've had this page or this post for a long time. It's a little outdated. Now I'm going to bring it to current. I'm going to make it better. And now it's new. Gotcha. So one, one thought and one question for you um, that kind of plays off of that is, you know, it, let's say you have different blog posts up over the years. You've done some good work of, of getting some blog posts up. One of the things with that strategy you just mentioned, which is a very, very, I wouldn't say it's, it's just an elegant, you know, approach. It's, it's a smart approach is, you know, which blog posts of mine have, have the most traction, have the most visitors. So it, it begs the, the next step of, of wanting to get some feedback from you related to Google Analytics. And are 
you know, are we actually paying attention to our Google Analytics? If I'm a remodeler, um, tell me about Google Analytics and what are some of the things that I can be utilizing that for and that I should be looking at? Yeah, it's a good question because to your point, yeah, if you're going back and looking at maybe you've got 50 old blog posts or 20 or 100, you know, in our case, it was over a thousand when we started going back and doing this process. And going, well, that's a little overwhelming. You know, how do I pick? Where do I start? And yeah, Google Analytics is a great place to go because you can look at which posts were the most popular. And sometimes you can go back and look at 2015 and see, oh, wow, this was really popular then. And then it just died out, you know, and it makes sense. In 2016, it becomes a little more irrelevant. Sure, somebody might be really doing some historical research on what the trends were, you know, years ago, but probably not. And that's not really your goal. Your goal is to attract people that are interested in remodeling today. So um, we like to look at a couple things. What are some posts that got good traction or currently still have good traction? Sometimes you have content that we call it evergreen, where it's still relevant today. It maybe doesn't expire as quickly as something mm -hmm. with a date. Um, it might be performing pretty well and getting good traffic and still getting you traffic today. That would be a good candidate to update and improve the content, see if you can give it another bump. Um, but we also like to look at it from a conversion standpoint. So uh, if you can see, oh, this post was getting is getting me 20 visits a month, even though I wrote it four years ago, um, but it also gets me no leads. Well, maybe you can add a conversion component to that post and start getting a lead a month or a lead every couple of months. Mm -hmm. And again, that may not seem like a lot, but if you compound that over 10 posts, 20 posts, and then thinking about that you already really did the work, you know, four years ago and you're just having- I, I, I don't know how you do your podcast, but I actually can hear into the future <laughs> of my listeners listening to this. And I just got word back that said, Spencer, you started talking about conversion aspects and you lost me there. So for the, for the person that just experienced that, number one, I heard you. And number two, talk, talk about that. I, I anticipate what you're talking about is adding to the bottom of that blog post, a, a call to action, a conversion, maybe share an example of that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know I tend to just get, get off to the races. No, so, that's good. You're good. um, yeah, let's just use the same example we've been talking about, which is design trends. Um, and so let's say you go back to that post from 2015 and you say, okay, I'm going to update it for 2019. It's going to be current, up to date, fresh, good content. When somebody gets to the bottom of that post, what's the next step? That's basically what we want to offer them. And so obviously requesting a consultation, great next step. Uh, a lot of people know how to take that step. You know, they can go find the contact page or the phone number in the header um, but let's say they're not ready to buy, then you might want to have something else to offer them as well. So, uh, a home design guide that maybe they can download. And then in order to download it, they have to give up name, email, phone number, something like that. And so that's what I talk about. You know, that's what I'm talking about when I talk about conversion, which is how do you get a name and an email or a phone call into you and, not to go too far down the conversion path, but we do have, I think of it broadly as two stages. There's somebody that's ready to buy now and we want them to contact us directly, fill out a form that says, Hey, I want to talk about my project. And then there's people that are ready to buy later. And that would the be vast, the vast majority of visitors. Yeah. Yeah. The vast majority. I mean, probably 90%, maybe 95% of your website yeah. traffic. And so, if you don't capture them now, they may not ever make it back to your site. And so that's right. where something like a design guide or a modeling checklist, something that's like a little extra value, but they have to trade their information for it. Now so if somebody, if somebody want, watch, this is going to, this is going to promote you, Spencer, buckle up, get ready. Um, <laughs> if somebody wanted to see an example of kind of an opt-in or a conversion aspect, if they went to builderfunnel.com, what would they see? Tons of them. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and if you which, go, and which I mean, one and which one should they pick on there, Spencer? So I would say if you go to our site, um, I mean, go to the resources section, and there's going to be boatloads of things that you can download. You know, we're going to have a social media checklist, which we've got one right now that's that we just updated again. That was an old piece of content, and we said, "Oh wow, Google Plus is dead now; it doesn't exist." Well, that shouldn't be in our checklist anymore. Sure. You know, so. Um, and there's a bunch of other ones on content and conversion and that sort of thing. But um, that starts to get into 
what I like to talk about in terms of the congruency of your content to your conversion offer. And that sounds really fancy, but it's not. It's yes. just, hey, I'm talking about a, a blog post about kitchens. If my conversion point is about kitchens, I have a better chance of getting kitchen somebody idea. to fill that out. Right. Kitchen idea book, et cetera. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Um, so give me, give me another kind of website item. Again, going back to our kind of opening parlay of, you know, here's another thing on the website. And then after that, what I want to jump to is the Google business page. And then okay. um, maybe a few thoughts related to the, the Facebook business page and maybe some of the ways that we can integrate that with our website and also maybe your best tip or two related to that. So another, another website item that comes to mind. Sure. Uh, big one, SSL. And that really is the green lock that you see when you go to a website and you'll see it on e-commerce sites like Amazon. If you just look at by amazon.com to the left of that, you'll see the green lock right by the HTTPS. Mm -hmm. And all that means is that your website is secure um, but it was last, I think, I think it was last year. Uh, but recently Google basically came out and said, Hey, we're prioritizing sites that are secure and we want all sites to be secure. So um, that one's a no brainer because that can instantly give you a bump in terms of an, you know, SEO, but it also if your competitors don't have it, it can give you a bump against them as well. Mm. So it almost seemed like two years ago, the, the big thing was you've got to have, you've got to have a mobile responsive website. If I, and, it, and kind of a way to, to view that is obviously on your phone, or even if you have it pulled up in your browser, if you just kind of shrink it over to the side, it'll kind of show what that looks like. But two years ago, mobile responsive website was, was really important. And oh, by the way, if your website is not yet, it's still very important. And then last year, this SSL thing, which that gets a little more technical. But again, we keep saying Google. We're not talking about any other search engine because they're the 800-pound gorilla. Yeah. And we have to please them. We have to do you know, the things that they're wanting to set up. And it does make sense. They don't want to be showing websites that have potential for hacks and viruses. So um, the SSL thing, that may be something that whoever is managing your website, just ask that question. That might be your takeaway from this podcast. Is my website secure with an SSL certificate? Because it's just become more and more important. Yeah. And really, I mean, depending on where you're hosted, you know, if it's with GoDaddy or something like that, like those services have, you can purchase an SSL. Um, depending on how your site's set up, it may be a little more, like you said, advanced to get it set up. So not necessarily something I'd recommend. Um, but yeah, go to your webmaster, something like that. And um, there are some hosting providers. There's one that we really like. If you are on WordPress, it's called WP Engine. And their hosting just automatically comes with an SSL. And so um, that's there's a few thing. options out there. But yeah, that's a good step. Um, I, I said give me one website thing, but now I want another one. You got another <laughs> one at the ready? Give me one more. Uh, let's see. Yes, I've got another one. So let's talk images. So obviously images are really important in our industry and especially, you know, on the portfolio, but even just your core pages, you're going to have, you want to display really nice images. Uh, a lot of times when we get professional photography done, yes, I said, get professional photography done, which is another topic we could talk about, but it's really important that you have good photos um, because that's what people are going to see. That could be their first impression of you is the photos on your website. So um, I'm going to assume that you've got professional ones. And if you do, they're going to be really high resolution and really large files. And if we upload those files to the website and put them in the portfolio, and then we maybe have to size them down a little bit to fit into wherever we're placing them, Google actually has to load the entire file and then they shrink it down for wherever it's fit into on the website. So that decreases your page speed and how fast your page loads. And that is an SEO or a ranking factor, which is how quickly does your website load. So a, an action item out, out of that is basically to go through and compress your images and make sure when you upload them, you're uploading them at the size that you need them for and not, not extra big. Not huge ones. Gotcha. Yeah. Is there one more on the website? Another website tip. Um, you got to have, I mean, you got to have a blog, um, which I think there's still a lot of people missing a blog. Uh, but as I was why, saying, why, do we, have, was why actually, do we have to have one? Why do you have to have one? Yeah. Well, a few reasons. One is it helps build trust and credibility. So as people are doing this research and they're hitting your site, 
um, they're going to be able to see that you know what you're talking about. Um, but more importantly, it's a way to address a lot of the things that people are looking for. And those actually, those posts end up bringing people to your site. And so sure, somebody's going to type in basement remodeling Seattle, but they're also going to type in how much does it cost to remodel a basement in Seattle? How long does it take? What are the design trends? And those aren't necessarily going to be website pages that you have, but they make for great blog posts. And so what we found is that, uh, you know, your blog can drive a huge amount of your total traffic to the website. Uh, I mean, it could be 50%, but in some cases oh. it could be well, well north of that. Awesome. Perfect. So moving, moving on to Google business page, tell us some, some tips and what you would be advising uh, the remodelers to be looking at and updating on that. Yeah. Well, definitely have one, you know, and make sure it's set up because that's what's going to get you into the map. You know, so if people don't know what the Google page is, it's basically your Google local listing. And if you do a search in, in your local area, then you can show up in the map, um, just like if you do a search for restaurants. And so you want to have that profile filled out as completely as you can. So loading photos in there, having all your hours of operation, you know, information about the business, a link to your website, um, and then there's a couple things that you can actively work on besides just making sure you have it and it's fully optimized and it's there. Um, one is reviews and that is talk a to me. One. Talk to me, Spencer, everybody <laughs> stop what you're doing and listen to the man right now. He's talking about something very important that every one of you needs to take more seriously. Carry on. Okay. Reviews. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, it's huge. Think about the way you do research and, and not even just for our industry, you know, restaurant, whatever you do a search and you go, Oh, there's five things that came up and Oh, there's a few three stars and there's a few four stars and a few 4.8s and a couple fives. You know what? People aren't even going to look at the threes and they may be not, not even looking at the low fours because it's dependent on what they're comparing it to. So it's really important that you look at not only your reviews, but what do your competitors and the other people showing in the map have for their reviews. And more often than not, it should be pretty easy to overtake b these people because I typically see that there's maybe like three reviews here, two reviews here, four here on Google. Um, yes, it's a total pain to get these things. It's, it's a grind because somebody has to have a Google account. They have to be signed in. They have to go to your link. They have to write something depending on your audience, that can be more or less of a challenge. And, uh, but I will say that again, if somebody, your competitors only have three, four or five reviews and you come in and you just focus on getting these and you get to 10 and you're sitting at a 4.5, 4.8, you know, you don't have to be at a five star. You just want to have more reviews than everyone else and a good rating. And then yeah you're going to be in good shape. And yeah, so, I mean, those are the basics I would say about the reviews, but yeah. just make it a part of your system, right? Every month I'm just reaching out to people that I just completed some projects for, or I'm going back and trying to get some from some right. old clients that I know are happy, reach out to three or four people and just build it into your system every month and just try to or get, I, or I, or I go to house and I've got 10 reviews over there, but none of them have left it on Google. So I copy and paste what they wrote on house. I reach out to them and say, Hey, you wrote this on house for us. Could you copy and paste this into Google? Here's the steps for it. And it's the reason I wanted to make a big splash about it is I'm just more and more convinced that it really, really matters. And there's no magic bullet to it. You know, one of my clients went from four to 25 during from January, 2018, to December 31st, 2018. Yeah. Desperately, I wanted to hear, what, what did you do? How did you do it? I just followed up. And when they yeah. said they were willing to do it and then they didn't do it, I followed up again. And, and sometimes I actually followed up that last time. I just called them one more time and then they finally did it. And I just had, you know, you set, put, put, put something on the wall that just says, you know, one Google review per month. Make that a KPI, make that a key performance and make just that a simple goal because that those reviews, they're spidering out into a lot of other places online. More and more people are, are, are viewing them. It seems that Google is using um, that, that local and that map listing more and more. And I think they're going to continue to do that. It's just such valuable real estate. And when you're playing around with one review, two reviews, three reviews, stop what you're doing right now and just go search your business name in your city and it'll pop up if you haven't seen it. Look, how many reviews do you have? And 
you get one stinker and a lot of times that stinker that leaves you a one star review is not even somebody you did work with. Yeah. It's maybe somebody you qualified out and they throw a fit and blah, blah, blah. When you have 25 reviews and there's one crummy one, it, it gets buried. It doesn't, it doesn't impact things that much. But when you have two or one and you get one bad one, you look, you look like the crummiest company in the world. And that so many of you listening to that, we only have a handful um, you know, we can count them on one hand. So that's something, if that's a takeaway um, that you guys should definitely do. If you reach out, feel free to reach out to me or Spencer, you probably have one too. Um, if you want just a little, a little template, just a little email template that you can send for getting Google reviews, feel free to, to shoot me a note or Spencer, I'm sure you have something like that too, that you'd be happy to send. So. Yeah, I'm glad we All right, got a little worked up there. Uh, let me add one more thing on the reviews. Yeah. Uh, think about, so the one thing I always hear is, Hey, how do you, how do you get all your business? Oh, it's word of mouth and referral. And that's where most remodelers are getting 80%, 90% of their business. This is the online version of that. It's word of mouth and referral. And so if you, you're always going to be able to get that kind of organic word of mouth referral business, but if you want business from other sources online being one of them, when those people that don't know about you do a Google search they trust the people that have written those reviews and pe most people are smart. Like, like you said, if you got 25 reviews and one of them is a dud, people know, Oh, this person's probably crazy. You know, we've all read those reviews and go, yeah, this person's insane. You know, I, right. I don't they right. discount it. Uh, but when I go and buy a lot of things, I look at reviews and that's how I make my decision a lot of times. And so I think that's the important thing to remember too, is that this is just an extension of that, Right. organic word of mouth. I, th I think that is um, one, one other thing before I forget, like you can go in, once you claim your Google profile and you have, you know, control of it, you're able to leave a response to good, good reviews, bad reviews. That's another best practice. But you know, what you said made me think of, we have a, uh, we had a very nice Chinese food restaurant here in Brighton, Michigan. And they just, they've, I don't know if it's switched hands or whatnot, but it's crummy now. Nothing compared to your favorite place, which is Chipotle, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly you, you love yourself some chipotle but just just like last week just like last week i i searched chinese restaurants bright in michigan because there's like four or five around and it's like and yeah, we got to find a new one and 100 percent of my decision was just based on reading the reviews so think about your own behavior as you buy things i bet you you're going to realize i do i do look at the reviews i do click on that i do go through them well guess what that person searching kitchen remodeling, bathroom remodeling additions are probably doing it even more because this decision is even more impactful than, oh, we had a bad Chinese food restaurant, you know, yeah. experience. And so keep that in mind. Yeah. And I want to build on that too, since we're talking about research, you know, I think that we always, to your point, we don't necessarily think about, oh, I do it this way, but oh, that's not how people would do it for, for my business. And, you know, with this decision, you know, or any decision you make, you go online and you do all kinds of research. And if it is something where you're going to go talk to a salesperson, you try to find out as much as you possibly can before you talk to that person. Yeah. And that's the same thing for your customers is that they're going to your website, they're going to other websites, and they're just wanting to get all the information, cost, timeline, process, you know, design trends, all these things. And so that just, I think, builds the case for why, why you should be blogging, why you should write about this content is because people actually want that information. They're going to find it somewhere. So you might as well be the one to deliver them that content. Awesome. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of round, round in the home stretch, heading home here. Um, maybe share a, a thought or two related to the Facebook side of things or business page, how to, how to uh, work on that. And then we'll, uh, we'll kind of wrap up. Cool. Yeah. I would say Facebook, I mean, uh, well, it was down yesterday, which was interesting. I noticed that. Was yeah, kind of, that was interesting. <laughs> everyone was freaking out over that, but um, I would say there's a, a couple of things to consider. It used to be that as you built your following, so how many people like your page, that when you posted something, it went out to all those, those feeds, everyone that follows you. And today it really goes out to a very small percentage. So it's becoming more of a pay to play space. And we found that boosting your posts can be pretty effective. And it, you don't have to spend tons of money, you know, spend five or 10 bucks boosting a post, do that four times a month, you know, something like that so that you can take some of those and get them out to more of your audience. And you can also target with those boosts. So you can 
you know, say, hey, I want to show this to people in these zip codes or this, you know, this radius. And you can do some demographic targeting. They've paired a lot of that back, but you can still, uh, you can do, still do some of that. So I would say if you're only getting like a couple of likes on a lot of your posts, maybe try boosting a few and see if that has, uh, makes a difference. Um, okay. The other one is that you can actually boost. So this will be related to your website. You can boost like a blog post. And so say you post about your blog and then you boost it and you get more traffic to it. Uh, we've actually seen that have a positive SEO impact on that blog. So maybe you're saying, oh, Facebook doesn't ever do anything for me. Well, we know SEO is really powerful. And so uh, social media does tie into that. Google looks at social signals, but it's basically just like, what sort of activity are we seeing on social related to this website? And so I would recommend, you know, taking a, a blog or two a month and putting a little bit of budget behind that to, to gotcha. boost it as well. Excellent. Uh, so I, I think we, we little, go okay. ahead. Oh, I was going to say, if you want to pour a little more fuel on the fire, coordinate that with your email newsletter or your email blast. I wrote a post, I published it and we think, Oh, great. I published a blog. Everyone's going to come find it. But that's where the boost comes in. We can drive some traffic and then take your email and say, hey, we just wrote a post on XYZ topic and drive traffic there. Google sees there's traffic going to that post. People are clicking and interacting and that can help that post rise up in the rankings. Awesome. Awesome. So I think what we, what we covered today are just some good, not, not all, nor, I mean, we'd be here for eight hours if we were really wanted to go through everything, but just some good, solid fundamentals. I, I think some of the takeaways that I would love for people to have is, take a fresh look at things like you're busy and it's probably been a while since you looked at your website. You just heard several very practical, proven, simple, effective tips and what Spencer was sharing, you know, take a good fresh look at your website. What are some things to update? You know, has it been a year since you've even touched it? Have you had any new content? Make sure, you know, it's one of those things that as a remodeler, as a business owner, you know, you don't necessarily have to do the work yourself. You don't need to be the one going in and, and updating things, but you sure are responsible for making sure you have somebody on your team, whether in-house or out, out of house, making sure that is happening. Don't, don't say, ah, this is, this is techie. I've got a guy lean into it a little bit. Ask the questions. Is this SSL certified? Log in and make sure you have claimed your Google listing. Just really let this time that you invested on this podcast propel you into some action on some of the things you you heard. That's my that's my biggest goal, frankly, with every piece of content that I put out there. But I think especially here, there's a lot of just tangible things that you can go and, and execute. So maybe Spencer, I'd like you to give kind of a final takeaway that you would want the listeners to have and then uh, tell them again how they can find you. Yeah, so I think final takeaway is just be consistent and persistent. You know, I think a lot of times we get going on, oh, I'm going to work on those reviews, and then we get three, and then we're like, oh, okay, that was tiring. You know, I'm done with that. You know, Exhausted, like, yeah. Yeah, build it into the system. You know, okay, I'm going to start blogging. I went to, you know, a talk, or I heard this podcast, and I know I need to start blogging about stuff. And then you write, you know, four blogs in two months and then boom, Amazing. that's it. You know, and you kind of, and, and marketing really is a lot about consistency and it, it does lend itself to those same things when you talk about SEO or social media and all the little details and you've got to be consistent. And so the persistent part that I added was, it's going to feel like a grind sometimes. And, you know, you're going to say, why am I doing this? But hopefully today we've uncovered some of the reasons like why this stuff is so important and the impact it can have. And years go by pretty fast when you look back. And so if you say, hey, I'm going to get one review a month, you know, and you're, I'm guessing you're not in the business for the next two years. You want to be in the business for a while. And so right. you fast forward five years and you're sitting there with 60 reviews or whatever it is. And the rest of your competitors are doing the same thing where they're like, oh, I got three. I'm good. Oh, I got five. I'm good. Right. You are going to stand you know? out. Yeah, you'll just smoke them. So consistency and then be persistent through the, the tough times and just know, hey, I, I just got to keep working through this and then it gets pretty exciting. Awesome. So how, uh, how can they reach out to you or, or connect with you, Spencer, to chat more if they want to? Yeah, I mean, just real simple. Head over to builderfunnel.com and you can find lots of great information there. Um, hit the contact page, but um, easier than that, you can just send a quick note to me at hello at builderfunnel.com. Um, I read all those emails and yeah, happy to answer any questions. If people have follow up from what we talked about today, I know we talked about a lot and it kind of leads to other questions. So feel free to hit sure. me up. 
that's why we do it. We don't want to answer all their questions. They got to <laughs> you know, reach out and engage. And yeah. then I think finally, just to put you on the spot, you've been a dad for how long now? Oh man, it'll be two months and uh, tomorrow. Well, first of all, impressive. Nice way to way to know that it was the fifteenth. So you're two <laughs> months in. How would you? This is kind of putting you on the spot. What would be? And you're sleep deprived. And although you're telling me before we start recording, it sounds like you guys are being spoiled with this little guy. <laughs> but what would be the most surprising thing or the biggest lesson you've learned since you've become a father? I think uh, so. Surprising thing that I guess you wouldn't think you could get so much enjoyment out of just watching the little guy sleep. <laughs> you know, you're like, hmm, I know you're asleep and I should be sleeping, but yeah, I'm having a good time here just looking at you. That's awesome. Uh, and then uh, lesson learned, I think uh, it just helps put, put life in perspective a little bit more. And you start to realize like other problems that you may have had or have been dealing with suddenly those may be turned in from level five problems to level three or level seven to level five. You know, they just, they get deprioritized a little bit. So, yeah, but I'm, okay. I'm early, man. So I don't know if those are really, you know, I don't Sounds know if I'd be like taking that advice from me. Sounds like you're doing phenomenal so far. I'm a very emotional guy. So we got to stop talking about it or else you're going to make me tear up. <laughs> but those are, those are great, man. Keep, uh, keep working hard on that front and congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And right. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, you bet. Thanks. So if you enjoyed listening to this recording, I have a hunch that you would really enjoy being a participant in Remodelers Community. It is a private Facebook group free of charge. I have a lot of my remodeling clients in there. I have a lot of people who have just followed my work um, for a number of years. And the conversation is on a variety of topics on how to improve your remodeling business. A lot of just great people willing to share a lot of ideas, templates, tools. Did I mention it's free of charge? Go to remodelerscommunity.com and it'll redirect you right to where you can request to join the private Facebook group. Remodelerscommunity.com. I'll see you on there.